you're a good God. We worship you, Lord. desires, our needs and I thank you for your faithfulness mighty God you are so good you are so good with everything that's falling apart in this world but one thing that stands and remains the word of God and he's a good God he's a faithful God 
He will never leave you, neither would he forsake you. I know the promise of my God that he promised to be with me even until the very end of this world. Almighty God, your faithfulness, the fact that I can stand here with the breath that is in our lungs to say, Father, we are here. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. It's so much to be grateful for. Thank you that we can be found in your house, lifting up our hands, praising your name and saying that you are good. Oh, what a good God. What a good God. What a good God. What a good God. I'm grateful and I'm thankful for the goodness of God. My God is a good God. He's a wonderful God. He's a powerful God. Oh, Jesus is the Lord. Hallelujah. Jesus is Lord. Oh, Jesus is Lord in this place. It's the name of Jesus. I lift up the name of Jesus. For at the name of Jesus, every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that you are the Lord, my King, my God. Sing with me. God is so good. God is so good. Oh, God is so good. Sing it. God is so see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Now, Father, as I share your word this morning, because your word says in Romans 10, 17, so then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. I believe this morning that our lives will never be the same again in Jesus' precious name. Now, Satan, you are bound. The blood of Jesus is against you. You're the defeated foe. We bind you in the heavenly realm. We bind you in the spiritual realm. And we bind you on earth. We destroy you by the power that is invested in us because greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. Amen. I mean, if you're excited about your God this morning, I am. Amen. He's an awesome God. For me to stand here this morning is a miracle. You know, we've been, I was going through something physically, but today I could stand and say, truly, the Lord is our healer. Amen. We don't go by our feelings. We go by what the word says, because his word is truth. Jesus said that the words that I speak, they are spirit and they are life. I'd like you to open with me to the word of God this morning. Uh, in a book of Hebrews, as I shared this morning in the early service, first service, I, I still feel in my spirit, I, 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 as a believer, that I think Paul wrote, wrote the book of Hebrews, because if you go through it, there's similar teachings in the other episodes as well. Anyway, it's still the God's word, amen? I said it's still God's word. In the book of Hebrews, the fourth chapter, and verse 12, it says, for the word of God, who is the word of God? Does anyone know? Jesus. If you, if you read, read the book of John, it said, in the beginning was the word, the word was with God and the word became flesh and dwelt among us. Amen. Amen, my brother. For the word of God is living 
and powerful living. Jesus is living. He's not dead. Amen. He's interceding for you and I. He's at the right hand side of, of the Father. He's our mediator between God and man. Amen. He's our advocate, our defense, our intercessor. He's got you on his mind this morning. He's got you and me. He's mindful of us. And sharper than any two of the sword, piercing even the division of soul. Jesus loves souls this morning. I don't know if you believe that. Amen. And spirit and the joints and marrow, and is a discerner of thoughts and intents of the heart. Then we go down to verse 16 in the same chapter. Uh, let us therefore, let us therefore, the church of Jesus Christ, let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace. I mean, if you know, you don't have to go with fear and trembling before the Father. Because he's a God of grace. He's a God of mercy. You don't have to sacrifice. He became our sacrifice 2,000 years ago. Amen? Isn't he a wonderful Father? He said, with mercy, with grace, obtain mercy and find grace to help in the time of need. And all of us have needs this morning. I mean, if you don't have a need, whether it's physical, spiritual, whatever the need is, God is a good God. God is, <coughs> is a good God. Amen? Remember, we are fearfully and wonderfully made. We are created in his image, and he's a merciful father. Let's go to the same book, Hebrews chapter 11. <coughs> Excuse me. So the author writes, he starts off, he says, now faith is, now faith. I said, now faith. Now faith is a substance of things hoped for and evidence of things not seen. We live in a natural body, we live in a natural world, but we serve a supernatural God. I'll say it again. Nobody has seen God because God is a spirit. Amen? And, and the author writes, and he starts off, he says, now faith is, not before, but now, present time. Now faith is a substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. I like what verse 3 says. By faith, we understand that the words were framed by the word of God. It was a spoken word 2,000 years ago in the book of Genesis that God spoke and he created the word. So God has given us power to speak his word this morning. Amen. I mean, if you believe as I shared in uh, Hebrews chapter 4, it says the word of God is living. So every time you speak the word, you activate it, you give life to it in your circumstances, whatever you're facing. I believe when you speak, your situation is subject to change when you speak the word of God over your life. Amen? By faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God so that the things which are seen were not made of things which are visible. Made of things which are visible are things that are seen. Amen? And, it, and verse 4 says, By faith, Abel offered to God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain. It goes on in the book of Hebrews 11 chapter where men of God acted and lived by faith. So everything in this life that we do, we wake up by faith. Amen? Our, <laughs> we serve a God of faith. Amen? Hallelujah. The just shall live by faith. Amen? Faith, faith, faith. Now faith is. Amen? And it goes on to say, <coughs> excuse me, by faith, Amen. Enoch was taken away so that he did not see death. I mean, if you know that, God is able to do great and wonderful things. He performed signs, miracles, and wonders. Hebrews 13, 8 says that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. So don't think that our God is dead. Uh, he allows us, let's, we go through things. He's not responsible for sickness and disease. The devil is the author of sickness and disease. Are you listening to me? The woman that was bound for 18 years, Jesus told the Pharisee whom Satan bound. He never mentioned that God bound that woman, but Satan. So he comes to steal our joy, kill and destroy. But Jesus said in John 10, the latter part, I've come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. 
So how do you as a believer, do you believe God's word? <clears throat> do you believe the Bible? The man at the pool of Bethesda for 38 years, he has just been sitting and all he did was complain. Nobody is taking me to the pool. But the, but the spirit of God moved the water. So Jesus was there one day and he went to the man and he said, listen, do you want to be healed? The first thing he should have told Jesus, yes, Lord, I want to be healed. But he complained to Jesus, nobody takes me to the pool. So we need to put away our doubt and unbelief. Either you believe the word of God or not. It's up to you and me. Because I believe this is God's word. No man can talk me out of it. I know what the Lord has done for me. I was bound by drugs and alcohol. I was the write-off. I would have been dead in 1980. But God transformed my life. His word. I'm a living testament. I'm serious. To me, to, for me to be alive today, it has to be God. Because I took him at his word. And he saved my soul. Because Jesus is only interested in souls. Amen? Are you listening to me this morning? But everything is by faith. By faith. By faith. This walk is a faith walk. There's no other way we can please God through faith. Amen? Look at that Shonamite woman in the, in, in the Old Testament. She, took, she saw the man of God walk past the house every day with uh, <coughs> Elijah with his servant. They used to walk, I mean, his, yeah, that's right, his servant, they used to walk past. One day she told her husband, listen, you know, this man of God is walking past every day. I'd like to give him, build a room for him so he can come and rest. So that's exactly what she did. So the prophet spoke to his servant and said, listen, you know, this woman is so good to me. I need to find out what she needs. I mean, if you know, when you take care of a man of God, God will take care of you. Respect the man of God, take care of him, and obey what he says. He's under, you're under authority. He's the authoritative figure in the church of Jesus Christ. Don't badmouth him and, you know, say things because... The senior pastor of the church, or it could be me or anyone else, we are not here. God brought, I never knew that I want to be speaking the word of God. But we need to respect and honor men of, and women of God. Amen? Amen? So this is what he says. She said, listen, go get this man's room sorted out. So the servant went to the lady and asked her, what do you need? She said, I have no child. She said, and then he went back and told then the prophet, he went back to the prophet. And the prophet told him to go and tell the lady, this year, this time next year, you'll be with child. And so that's exactly what happened. God is not man that he should lie, amen? It's because his word, forever, O oh Lord, his word is settled in heaven. Psalm 118 verse, Psalm 119 verse 89. She bore a son, and then the son died. Now, it was an afternoon time, so she took a son, and her husband saw, this is not the day of Sabbath, why are you, where are you going to? The words that came out of the lady, the Shonamite woman, was, it is well. It is well. Could you imagine she's carrying a dead son in her hand and telling her husband that it is well. And then naturally, you might think she's gone off her head. But she knew that God is going to restore her son's life again. So she took, him, uh, she took the son to the prophet, and the prophet laid over him, and he became alive again. What am I saying this morning? We need to walk by faith and not by sight. In the natural, yes, we are in a pandemic, but Jesus Christ, he is our healer. Amen? Everything that is under Jesus' feet is under your feet and my feet this morning. Because he is the head, and we are the body of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah? The Bible also records in him, we live and move and have our being. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Sickness will come. Pain, sufferings. Uh, you know, we're not exempted from that. But we need to know, we, will, we need to believe and know that our God will deliver us. We will go through the valley of the shadow of death. You know what we're going to be there, but we'll go through it and we'll come out on the other side. Well and strong. Because he's a faithful God. So when you remain faithful, God will remain faithful. He'll honor you for that. Amen? Because the just shall live by faith. If you go to uh, 2 Corinthians with me this morning, 
Paul wrote the book of Corinthians. <clears throat> Reading from the first chapter, <clears throat> from verse 3. Amen. He said, Blessed be the God and Father. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies. His mercies are new every morning. And great is his faithfulness. Amen. But the book of Lamentations talks about that. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercy and of compassion. Hallelujah. And the God of all comfort. I don't know what you are going through this morning, but the God of comfort is in your mercy. He's with you. He will never leave you, nor forsake you. He will be with you even until the ends of the earth. Amen. He's the same God. He's, never will I leave you, Hebrews 13, 5. Never will I forsake you. And naturally you might feel that the God has forgotten about you. No, 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 no. He's a loving father. He will always come through for you when you call upon him. Amen. Verse 4, who comforts us in all our tribulation. Whatever we're facing this morning, he is our comforter, our strength. In the book of John, the 16th chapter, Jesus talks about the comforter, the Holy Spirit. Someone will do be exactly like me. <clears throat> Amen. So the Holy Spirit lives in each one of us when we accepted Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. Can I amen? Who comforts us in all our tribulation that we may be able to comfort those who are in any trouble. That's the church. That's why we have the church of Jesus Christ. We need each other. We need to take care of one another. Love one another. Not to be bitter against each other. Not to backbite and have a spirit of jealousy. No. You're not going to get blessed. Walk in love. Walk in forgiveness. Be faithful. When somebody is going through something, pick up the phone. Or send them a message. Say, you know what? I've got your back. I'm praying for you. It does us, that does something to the person. Amen? Hallelujah. I know people who sent me messages when I was going through something. It comforted me. God is a God of all comfort. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen? Who comforts us in our tribulation, our sufferings and pains, that we may be able to comfort others. Then he goes on to verse 5. For as the sufferings of Christ abound in who? So the sufferings of Christ abound in you and I. What can separate us from the love of God? Nothing. Romans 8, Paul wrote again. So our tribulation, suffering, pain. No. In all these things, we are more than conquerors. In all the things that we have faced, it's only for a season. We are more than conquerors. To Christ who loved us and who gave himself for you and I this morning. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. He's an awesome God. He's a magnificent God. Hallelujah. He's a glorious God. And in John 14. The New Testament. Open to John 14 this morning. <clears throat> Thank you Jesus. Thank you Lord Jesus. Verse 12, John 14, verse 12. Most assuredly, Jesus is speaking, is written in red, the word of God. He said, most assuredly, I say to you, he who believes in me. Are you a believer or a doubter this morning? You're a believer, amen? We are believers in Christ, amen? He who believes in me, that the works that I do, he shall also do greater works than these he will do because I go to my Father. So the church of Jesus Christ should do mighty works this morning. Because we are the body of Christ. Can I amen? Amen. Signs, miracles, and wonders should be the order of our day. Amen. Because Jesus said we will do greater works than these. And verse 13 says, And whatever you ask, whatever you ask, whatever is whatever. Amen. So you can put your list there. Whatever what your need is. It says, whatever you ask in whose name? Not in the pastor's name or your family's name or your... No, he said, 
whatever you ask in my name now jesus name is above every other name and in the name of jesus every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that jesus christ is lord to the glory of god our father hallelujah you need to get excited about your god he hasn't forsaken you the devil is a liar you say no you've been sick you will never make it you know give up on this god no he that endures to the end shall be saved you continue fighting the devil every day of your life you continue believing continue trusting that god is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that you ask or think of according according to your his riches in glory philippians chapter 3 verse 20 keep asking keep praying keep knocking and god will answer and he says whatever you ask in my name that i might do that i will do that my father may be glorified god is a good good god you don't have to pray for hours just simple childlike faith just open your mouth like you talk to your husband your wife your friends just talk to the lord he will come through for you because he said that and whatever you ask in my name that i will do that the father may be glorified in the son if you ask verse 15 14 if you ask anything anything in my name i will do it now that's the kind of god i want to serve that he's mindful of me that he is my father and i'm his son a earthly father will do anything for his children. I mean, if you know what I'm talking about. They'll make a huge sacrifice to make sure that the children have been taken care of. How much more would our Heavenly Father do things for you and I? I want you to think about it. The one that created you and I and created your dad and mom. How much more will he do for you and I? I just want to close this morning in the same book of John, chapter 7. I'm excited this morning, amen? To so thank God. Thank you. For his goodness and his mercy. Sorry, it's Matthew chapter 7. Apologize. <clears throat> and reading from verse 8, if you got your Bibles with you. For everyone who asks, Again, from John 14, 23, he said, if you ask anything in my name, he will do. There again, he's confirming it. He says, for everyone who asks, receives. And he who seeks, find. And to him who knocks, it shall be open. God will open doors for you that you never dreamt of. That the favor of God will be upon you and your family for the rest of your life. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow you all the days of your life. What more you want from God? You need to believe him. You need to take him at his word. And this is what he says here. Oh, what man there among you, if your son asks for bread, will he give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, will he give him a serpent? If you know being evil, know how to give good gifts for your children. We as earthly fathers and parents want to give good gifts for our children. How much more? Thank you, Lord Jesus. How much more? How much more will your Father in heaven, who is in heaven, give you good things to those that ask him? To give you good things to those that ask him. I feel his presence this morning. Oh, Jesus, I feel your presence. If I could only share this one scripture this morning, that's all that matters. Wow, this is awesome. This is awesome, awesome, awesome. If you're being, if you're being evil, how much more your heavenly father give you good things to those that ask? Wow. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Well, what have you been trusting God for? 
What have you been asking God for? He will give it to you. Today is your day, is your turning point in your life. If you believe what I read today. Not tomorrow. Not next week. Now. He said, now God. Now faith is. I want you to believe his word. We take everybody else at the word. And we believe and they let us down. But this word. Is forever settled in heaven. Jesus Christ. Is the same. Yesterday. Today. Forever. He's not the God of the past. He's the God of the present. So don't get depressed and worried. Because your best is yet to come. I said your best is yet to come. It's only a prayer way. And when you open your mouth and ask our Heavenly Father. That's how close he is to us. Ask that your joy may be full. I don't want to just take him at his word. If Jesus said it, that's it. It's settled in my mind, my spirit, my soul. If you are going through something this morning, quickly stand at your feet. I want to pray for you. You don't have to come to the front. You trust in God. I want to trust. I want to believe with you this morning for your need to be missed. You can sit there, brother. We pray for you. Just be at your seat. Ask. Ask that your joy may be full. You know, I've realized during this pandemic, money has no value anymore. I mean it. During this time, but all you need is Jesus. Jesus will turn your life around. You will take a nothing and make him a something. He is no respecter of persons. He is not a God who is mindful of your skin color. No. We are his children. He has no favorites. We can boldly go to the throne of grace. And he will come through for us. Father, I thank you. Put your hand on your heart this morning. And receive. Father, I thank you. I remind you of your word in the book of Matthew chapter 7, he said, if we ask anything, if we ask the Father anything in Jesus' name, you will give it to us. That our joy may be full. I pray for every child of yours this morning. Touch them. Deliver them from infirmities and sickness. It's of the devil. We rebuke pains. We rebuke arthritis. All manner of sickness, disease, flu, cold, COVID-19. Every sickness and disease is under our feet. Because he took it all and he laid it to the cross 2,000 years ago. 39 stripes. We believe you silly, Lord. You're the God. We thank God for, thank the Lord for doctors and medicine. But you are our healer as well, Father. Through our faith, through our own faith, you can make us well. You can supply every need in our lives according to Philippians chapter 4, verse 19. And we can do all things to Christ who strengthens us. Philippians 4, 13. As we sit in our lives today, we give you our hearts. We give you our lives. We rededicate our lives to you from this day. That our lives will never ever be the same again in Jesus' name. Lord, I'm in agreement with, as a family, I'm agreeing with every family for the miracles. Where the doctor said there's no hope, you are the God of hope. You're a God of mercy. You're a God of compassion. You're a God who said, I am the God that healed thee. I'm your supplier in this life. You lived in us, Lord. You walked this earth. You lived in our bodies. You were touched with our infirmities. You remember, Lord, when you went to Lazarus' tomb, 
you lift up your hand. He said, Father, you cried at the tomb because you had feelings like us. And you know exactly what we go through. But everything is going to change, Lord, because we believe that you're a God of peace, God of compassion, and your mercies are new every morning. Amen and amen and amen. We give the Lord a mighty praise offering this morning. I want you to stand this morning as an answer benediction. Just lift your hands, please. Say, Father, thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. We love you, Lord. Now may the God who created us, God our Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, abide with each one of us. In Jesus' precious name, with much thanksgiving. Amen and amen and amen. I want to hear some testimonies. You're going to have a powerful, overcoming, and a favorable week. In Jesus' name. Would you give the Lord a mighty praise offering? God bless you. We love you all. Take care.